In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the if function to choose from among more than two things. The if function by itself allows you to choose from among two things. Uh, for example, um, pass fail. So if I wanted to do an if function here to determine if somebody passed, uh, we would go to our um, logical, choose the if function, and then put in a rule, let's say that uh, greater than or equal to 60 is what we need, and if that's true, then, whoops, I didn't say what cell is greater than or equal to 60. Uh, C2 is greater than or equal to 60, and if that's true, put the letter P in there. If it's false, put the letter F in there, and let's click on OK, and it tells me that, uh, OK. So that'll tell me what the grade is. Let's center those and make it a little bit easier to read. And uh, these are all greater than or equal to 60, but here's one that failed. Here's a couple more that failed. Here's a couple more that failed. So uh, it's letting us make a decision. It's letting us choose from among one of two things. But what if we wanted to do an A through F here instead? And let's say that our grading scale was uh, 90 or more is an A. If it's not an A, then 80 or more is a B. If it's not a B, then 70 or more is a C. And if it's not a C, 60 or more is a D. And otherwise, uh, if it is less than 60, then it's going to be an F. Okay, so that's our grading scale. Um, the problem here is we need to choose from among five things, and an if function only lets you choose from among two. Okay, well, we can still do it, but we're going to have to use more than one if function. Um, we can use an if function, first of all, to determine if it's an A or if it's not an A. And then we can determine, if it's not an A, we can determine if it's a B or not a B. And if it's not a B, then we determine if it's a C or not a C. And if it's uh, not a C, then we determine if it's a D or an F. Okay, so in each one of those cases, we're making a uh, decision and choosing one of two things where some on each one of those though one of the branches took us to a place where we had to make another decision now we're going to flip over here to a word document and we're going to um, draw a little picture here of how you would you would make such a decision so uh, the first part of the rule was greater than or equal to 90 okay and that's either going to be true or it's going to be false okay and if it's true they get an A if it's false then we have to make another decision well was their score greater than or equal to 80 and if that's true then they got a B and if that's false then they didn't get an A or a B, and so we have to check again. Well, was their score greater than or equal to one seventy? And if the answer to that question is true, then they got a C. And if the answer to that question is false, then they got a D or an F. So we have to ask one more question to determine whether they got a D or an F. And that is, was their score greater than or equal to sixty? And if the answer to that is true then they got a D, and if the answer to that is false, then they got an F, okay? Now, every place here where I've got uh, this greater than or equal, where I'm doing a logical test, uh, the logical test is either going to be true or false. And um, then we go on, if we take the right branch every time here, we end up doing another logical test until we get to the bottom. So we're making a little decision tree here. We're starting at one end of the number line, and we're checking to see if the number is on that end of the number line. If it is, we know for sure what they got for a grade. Okay, and uh, if not, we don't know what they got. But if but if they didn't get an A and their score is greater than or equal to 80, then we know that they got a B, and and so on down the line. Now, every place where I've got one of these decisions here, that corresponds to the logical test in an F. So there's one logical test, there's another logical test, and this graphics tablet's kind of a pain to use. So there I've got three logical tests, or four logical tests rather, and each one corresponds to an if. So uh, this is what my if is going to look like. 
uh, this is the logical test, and this is the value of true, and the value of false is going to be another if. Okay, and if that if logical test is true, then it's going to be a B, and if it's false, then it's the value is going to be another uh, if function, and if the value of that logical test is true, then it's a C, and if it's false, then I've got another logical test, which means another if. So if I want to choose from among one, two, three, four, five things, I need to have four logical tests, and if I need four logical tests, that means I need four if statements. So if you can draw a little decision tree like this, then you can easily translate this directly into a series of if functions. So it's not really that hard to do. So we're going to shift back over to Excel and we're going to go here and delete this and we can't use the um, function arguments dialog box because we're doing more than one function here. So we're going to have to just write it from scratch, but it's pretty easy to do. Um, as a matter of fact, I think what I'll do here is I'll drag this over one side and I'll take this and I'll drag it over the other side and I missed. Uh, let's try that again. And I know what's wrong here. We'll just, I'm going to have to do this manually. And then I'm going to shrink it down a little bit so I can see the whole thing while I'm working here. Okay. So let's go over here and do my logical test. My logical test is now it's a fun it's a formula, so I have to start with equals if and my score is in C2. If it's greater than or equal to 90, that's my first logical test, comma, then the grade is an A, and you have to put quotation marks around it here, comma. Now if it's not greater than or equal to 90, then I need another if to see if it's greater than or equal to 80. So C2 is greater than or equal to 80, comma, then if that's true, they got a B. So let's go here and put a B. And if that's false, then I need another logical test to see if it's greater than or equal to 70. Greater than or equal to 70. And if that's true, then the score is a C, comma, and so we're right on this branch. And if it's false, then I need one more logical test and one more if. So the last one is if C2 is greater than or equal to 60, comma, they got a D, comma, otherwise they got an F. And that first parenthesis closes off the last if. It's for this one. Uh, the next parenthesis closes off the next to last if, which has this logical test. The next one closes off this if which is the greater than or equal to 80, and the last one closes off the original if. And so if I hit enter now, uh, it tells me that 80 was a B, which is correct. Now let's just drag this part of the way down the page here, and let's check the rest of them. Uh, score in the 60s uh, would be a D. All of these are in the 60s, so they're a D. 48 is an F, 81 is a B, 46 is an F, uh, 60 is a B, a D, 87 would be a B, 75 would be a C, uh, 96 would be an A, and so on. So if you can draw a simple decision tree like this, which I don't think is that hard to do, that directly translates into uh, this series of if functions called a nested if. And the only, the trickiest part really about it, once you've got the decision tree, is just getting the syntax right here and making sure you don't skip any commas or leave parentheses out or something like that. Uh, when you're writing a long formula like this, it's easy to make a mistake. Um, but if you're careful, uh, it shouldn't be that hard to do.